Welcome back to the same place as last time. Today's video is all about the perfect pull-up. The pull-up is one of the best bodyweight pulling exercises out there and it is the foundation upon which your back training should be built. Once you master the pull-up, you can then take those principles and apply them to any pulling exercise that you do. In this video, we will break down the pull-up into its component parts so we can achieve mastery at each stage and in doing so, build the perfect pull-up. My name's Nikki, this is QED Fitness, and before we start, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future video. First of all, let's talk about hand position because the first thing you do is grab a hold of the bar. There are three main variations. There is the underhand grip or chin up, there is the overhand grip or pull up, and there is the ring pull up, which allows your arms to rotate freely, starting at pronation at the bottom, ending fully supinated at the top. There is also the neutral grip, which is just halfway between your overhand and underhand grip. So logically, we can assume if there are any differences between the overhand and underhand, then the neutral grip will just be the halfway point of those differences. So because of that, we won't cover the neutral grip any further. So of these three grips, which one do we want to do? To answer this question, first we need to identify what muscles are we even trying to target when we do the pull-up. The prime mover of the pull-up is the lats, and the secondary muscles are the biceps and forearms. So the question then becomes, is there any difference in muscular activation between the three versions? EMG research has shown that there isn't a massive amount of difference in activation between the three variations. Researchers found when comparing the three versions that the chin up or underhand grip had slightly higher activation in the biceps and the ring pull up had slightly higher activation in the lats than the other two versions. The reason why the ring pull up had the highest activation in the lats is because as I said before, the ring pull up allows your arms to rotate freely. This means that your shoulder can get into the ideal position to contract the lats, which also changes throughout the movement. So given that the differences in muscular activation were not huge between the three and not everybody has access to rings, from here we will focus on the overhand grip version or the pull up. So onto the technique. First, we need to talk about the width of your grip. The two main movements we want to train when doing the pull up are shoulder extension and shoulder adduction. Shoulder extension is moving your upper arm behind you and shoulder adduction is moving your upper arm closer to your body. So the best grip width is one that is going to facilitate the best of both of these movements. An excessively close grip means your upper arm has to go further into extension, but it also prevents you from maximally adducting your arm. However, a wider grip means that the range of motion is shorter, but over that shorter range of motion, it may feel harder because the shoulder is at a mechanical disadvantage. In the case of strength and hypertrophy, the science is clear. We want to be training the muscle through its full range of motion for the best results. However, you may have heard that a wide grip will give you wide lats or something to that effect. This claim is often repeated. However, it is based solely on two EMG studies that compared only a narrow supinated grip with a wide overhand grip. They found that a wide pronated or overhand grip had more lat activation than a narrow supinated or underhand grip. That's fine, but I have a question for you. What's the cause of the increased lat activation due to the width of the grip or the orientation of your hands. Based on these data, there is no way to tell. Research in 2010 thankfully answered this question with good experimental design. They tested both a narrow and wide underhand grip as well as a narrow and wide overhand grip. They found that there was no significant difference in lat activation between a wide and narrow grip, no matter how you orientated your hands. They did, however, find a difference in lat activation between an underhand and overhand grip. So what these results are telling us is that the overhand grip is king, but the best grip width is one that feels comfortable for you. For most people, slightly wider than your shoulder width is a good place to start. When you pull, think about driving your elbows down to the floor at the same time as you are pulling your upper arm as close to your body as you can. This will maximize the adduction and extension capabilities of the lats. Next up is scapular movement, and you've probably been told to get your shoulders down and back before you begin any upper body exercise. The reason why this is suggested is because for a lot of exercises, it helps align the shoulder joint throughout the movement. However, when we are pulling, much like the reasoning I gave in my push-up video, the ideal position for your shoulder is actually going to change in the sagittal plane throughout the movement. This means that we don't fix the shoulder blades in retraction at the start of the movement. We want them to be able to move in the sagittal plane from protraction at the bottom to retraction at the top. We do want to pull the shoulder blades down or depress them throughout the entire movement because this will create stability as well as prevent any kind of impingement issues, which I've also covered in other videos. Compare what's known as the passive hang to the active hang. The passive hang is when you are hanging from the bar with no scapular muscles engaged and the active hang is when you are hanging with your scapular muscles fully engaged. 
The active hang will give you a stronger initial pull from the bottom position and it is where you should start every single rep of your pull up. Think about pulling your shoulder blades down towards your back pockets as far as you can before you begin the pull with your arms. And now, to kip or not to kip. I'm not here to sling hate on kipping. Kipping can be beneficial if what you want to do is increase the amount of pull ups you can do in a given amount of time or if you are training for your first muscle up, but for most people kipping is not advised and here's why. The biggest problem with kipping is that there is no way to tell how much the kip is actually contributing to the lift. Are you getting better at kipping or are you getting stronger? There is simply no way to tell. If you want to be able to measure your strength and build on your progress effectively, then strict pull-ups are the only way to go. And finally we come to core engagement and there are two main versions. The hollow body where your core is engaged, your hips are posteriorly rotated and your feet are in front of your hips and the arch where your lower back is arched and your feet are behind you. If you want to get as many reps as possible or lift the maximum amount of weight then the arch is probably the way to go. The reason why the arch is stronger is because it is changing your torso angle which results in more of a horizontal pull rather than a strictly vertical one. Look at where the direction of the pull intersects with the torso. Essentially, you are changing the pull into more of a row which allows you to generate more force. The hollow body should be chosen when you want the added benefit of core engagement when doing your pull ups or if the reason you are even training the pull up is to get your first muscle up. So there you go, that is how you do the perfect pull up. By breaking the pull up down and mastering each stage, we were able to build the perfect pull up. I hope you learned something throughout the video and if you did, like the video and subscribe to the channel, I would massively appreciate it. My name's Nikki, this is QED Fitness and remember, knowledge is power. Catch you next time.